Mihai's second sortie was designed to calculate how his physiology changed under the stress of combat. My job was to compare his performance as a pilot now to when he was younger and understand how his skills evolved. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure I wanted to know the answers anymore. For a man his age, Mihai's body was unbelievably resilient, remarkably flexible. His reflexes were as sharp as they ever were. Still, after all those years of flying in the outer layers of the atmosphere, even someone as strong as Mihai wasn't immune to the effects of the strain. The human body is fragile. It was not meant to handle the excessive amounts of radiation that constantly bombarded the stratosphere. For Mihai's second sortie, we used a flight suit that was still untested. He seemed fine on takeoff, but by the time he landed back at the base, he was clearly a mess. He got caught in a surprise dogfight with an especially stubborn enemy. It took a while for Mihai to bring him down. The suit was ineffective. According to the data, it wouldn't let him fly to his full potential. A new flight suit was made to my exact specifications. When it finally arrived, Mihai's granddaughters glared at me with their disapproval. They blamed me for the pain their grandfather had to keep enduring. But Mihai remained stoic. He wasn't the type of man who cared about anything that happened here on the ground. I wasn't worried about it. I was confident the new suit would protect him thoroughly so that he could maneuver his plane any way he wanted. The moment he took off in his new flight suit, I realized what I had failed to before. Right after takeoff, as the wheels retracted, the plane suddenly arced up. It accelerated so quickly. I had never seen a plane move like that before. Mihai hit the high G's multiple times before disappearing into the blue. The support team couldn't even keep up. And then I knew. I understood why he never seemed to care about restoring his stolen country back to its former glory, and why he didn't seem to care about anything that happened here on the ground. Of course, Mihai's kingdom was the sky. The operation to capture Arusha's capital, Farbanti, is beginning. This is the culmination of our work. We need to capture the Arusian forces' general headquarters in the south of Farbanti and end this war. The plan is for ground troops to attack Farbanti from both the east and north, and a task fleet will attack from the southwest. We will secure air superiority over the capital while providing air support for our allies on the ground and in the water as required. By all accounts, we expect this to be an intense, full-scale battle across land, sea, and air. Should you need to replenish your ammunition or make necessary repairs to your craft, a return line has been set up in the north. During this operation, we will also be tasked with having to destroy the communications satellites that Neruja hacked. If we take down the information communication system that we believe they have control over, it should plunge Arusha into chaos. Once the capital falls, the Arusian military will be isolated and thrown into chaos, making it easier for us to end the war. However, that can't happen until after the capital falls, so you guys are the stars of this battle. Arusha will fight like a tiger, but we cannot lose. We must seize the capital and end this war. <laughs>